Now we'll start with chart one and read it with me. Fallen angel powers in control of the earth. The Illuminati claims to have pure bloodline from the fallen angels, Genesis 6, and they will be immortal and travel to the stars. Any adverse attention given to them, they deflect onto Jews and Zionism. However, most members are not Jews. The founders were matriarchal Jews by birth, but not by religion. The Rothschild dynasty founded the secret society Zionism, with members worldwide, particularly in government and banking. They use the lay Jews as pawns in their evil corporations, positions of power and plans. The secret society cartel ruled the world. Now this is just a few of them. The Illuminati, Freemasons, CFR, Trilateral Commission, Skull and Bones, Fabians, Bilderbergs, World Health Organization, Jesuits, Papacy. Now these secret societies control all media, the United Nations, NATO and the military, all corporations and banking, science, all religions and all governments. These self-appointed new world leaders hold meetings as the Bilderberg Group. And this has recorded that the Kabbalah Jewish mysticism is the key to all masonry and the occult sciences. Note, the New Testament repeats the Kabbalistic doctrines in the book of Revelation. They will abolish Christianity. They're going to initiate the new world order religion, the Lucifer religion. They will convert all civil governments to corporations so that they can control them. They will abolish private fee simple ownership rights on property. They are well down the road to achieving this. Now this is achieved by using their Noahide laws from the Talmud with the papacy UCL laws replacing the Ten Commandments as the base law for the West Westminster system. Now that's officially accepted by Congress, United Nations, NATO and the West. Masons figure everywhere in history. Members Rutherford and Russell founded the Jehovah's Witness and the Mormon Church was founded by Mason Joseph Smith. Their God is Lucifer, Satan, who they refer to as the great architect of the universe. And in the Bible and the prophecy, the mute abomination and the God war, Ezekiel 38 and 39, they are eventually all destroyed by Yahweh, the living creator God. Now we're up to chart two, and I've given you a timeline here to explain things to you. And the question is, was there any faithful people in Babylon that's faithful to Yahweh? Because in 721 BC, they, 10 tribes were taken captive to Syria. Later on in 586 BC, the rest of Israel and Judah were taken captive to Babylon. Then you've got them returning to Jerusalem. But the priest Ezra, and Ezra's got a book in the Bible, he tells Israel that they're still the chosen people of Yahweh. And that is false. Then you've got the great assembly, the 120 elders, the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees. You come up to Rabbi Akiva and 10 of those elders with him were all executed at the stake. And then it continues on with the Sanhedrin. But notice the Babylon Talmud and oral law was composed in that section and the Torah was rewritten and the Bible canon was completed in that section. But overall, over 1,000 years, no faithful servants were for Yahweh. Yahweh says down the bottom, the gods that did not create heaven and earth shall vanish. Their names will never be remembered. That's Jesus and Allah, etc. Yahweh said also, I made everything by myself. I gave a soul to the people on the earth and a spirit. Now I've given you in-depth reports on this. Yahweh's words, 
They burnt their sons and daughters in fire, which I did not command, and it did not enter my mind. And you'll see there a little note that obviously the instructions that allegedly says that God gave instructions to Abraham to kill his son Isaac is false. Yahweh also says, do not take notice of your prophets and priests that have gone to Babylon. They speak in my name, but I did not send them. I did not ask for sacrifices over the 40 years of sojourn out of Egypt. And you'll get more of that in those reference texts of the Bible. Now, it's very important for you to make a note there that in that section, the Torah written and the Bible canon compiled, there is a section of the timeline that these people were responsible for writing the Bible that you've got in your hand. And these are the people that also put in the fake and false inserts to prop up their own doctrine. So it's very important that you realize that this is the period of time that the Bible was put together, not by people who were um, faithful to Yahweh, but by people that Yahweh had already rejected and decreed to annihilate them by sword, by pestilence, and by famine. So remember that because this is where you got your Bible from. Now, when I researched and I found all this out, it really upset me. On your left, you can see the floor plan of Solomon's temple. But on your right, you can see the floor plan of all of the other nations' temple with the Holy of Holies coming out of Babylon, Egypt, Canaan, Aram, and Assyria. And I put a note there for you. As the Israelites had been following the idol worship system for 1,500 years, and the Torah and the Bible was not written until the 5th century BC, which I've already shown you, and that was put together by men who had been rejected to be annihilated by Yahweh, then you've got to ask the question, why did they build a temple which was a copy out of Egypt, for example, when Yahweh said, he did not request any blood sacrifices. Now Yahweh's instructions is very, very clear. He had told Israel, make no covenant with the nations around you, but they did. And here is Solomon doing the same thing in Second Chronicles chapter 3 and 4 and 5. They built the temple under the same dimensions as Egypt. And that's obvious. They were also told way back in Joshua's time, do not intermarry with any of the nations around you. But they did. Against Yahweh's expressed command, Solomon married 700 wives, 300 concubines from all the nations around, and he went after their pagan gods. But there was a warning. Yahweh said, but if you turn away and forsake my decrees and commandments and you worship their gods, I will uproot your kingdom and this temple. I will make Israel to be abhorred in all of the nations. Now, notice one thing about this, that he said he will have nothing to do with Israel anymore. As a matter of fact, it's not long after this that 10 tribes were taken off Solomon's son, Rehoboam, and the rest of them were uh, uh, left in, in Ju as Judah. The uh, kingdom was split into two, and that all happened in front of their eyes. So this is an example that by Solomon's disobedience and going against the instructions from Yahweh, and don't forget, Yahweh appeared to him twice and gave him more wisdom than any other man on this earth. I found that a terrible shame when I, re when I researched this and I came to these conclusions. Now, on this 
chart called the arc. By the way, you can get a lot more on this, even though it's about three hours long. Go into YouTube and see The Secrets in Plain Sight by Scott Onsort and The Secret Architecture of Fallen Angels in YouTube. Now, there is an example of the Egyptians bowing down to their ark in their temple, uh, also in the section called the Holy of Holies. For over 1,000 years, the ark was part of the furniture in the Holy of Holies of Egypt, and before it was written up into the Bible, 300 BC, these ancient Egyptians worshipped the ark in their temple cult of Osiris, Isis, and Horus. Now, there's many false texts that I've already shown you, uh, written up into the Torah, and that's in Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, and Deuteronomy, which includes the fake Day of Atonement, which I gave you a report on, Yom Kippur. It's compiled by the Great Assembly, Priest Ezra, Rabbi Akiva, and the Sanhedrin, which I've given you the details on. But there's a note there from Yahweh. Yahweh, the living creator, God said, I did not ask for blood sacrifices during the 40 years sojourn out of Egypt. Now, when you realize that he also said, and I never commanded it to your forefathers, which is Abraham all the way through to Moses. Now, I said before, and the title of this film is all about the Bible is full of paganism. On your screen, you can see a clip concerning the keys to heaven as a silver key and a gold key. This came straight out of the Egypt temple cult symbol, and it is now the emblem of the papacy. Now, you'll read, of course, if you know your New Testament, that was given to Peter. And that is none other than the Horus symbol. So you can see how close we are to showing you that the Bible, and particularly the New Testament, is not only fake and false, but it is a copy over from the temple cult system out of Egypt. I realize, of course, that the people were all up to their nose in this idol worship for over 1,000 years. Now, on your screen, you've got the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. I've also put a note down the bottom there to tell you that if you go into Scott Onstott's report, The Secret Architecture of Fallen Angels, you'll get a lot more details. But for hundreds of years, the ancient temple that you look here in this picture, that was for Venus and Aphrodite. Now, it wasn't until later on, uh, somewhere in the 150-200 AD, that it becomes the temple of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, and that it is rededicated as a temple to Jesus. So you can see how... The whole Bible has been filled up with lots of examples of pagan idol worship. And that's why we're putting on this screen, the uh, Bible is full of pagan idol worship. Now on your screen, you've got a uh, example there of the Aphrodites and the Isis system out of Egypt. There you've got an example which came out of uh, Scott Onstott's uh, report, The Secret Architecture of the Fallen Angels. And then you've got Mary and Jesus. Now you've got to realize that this was very easy for them to transfer over and then build up a big story about it, write it up into the New Testament and they've been trying to convince people, and all the Christian people in the world have been duped and deceived by these lies. And I find that very concerning. That makes me very unhappy to see that that is what they've got away with, the Illuminati, the Masons, the cartel of the secret societies, 
there behind all this which I've shown you and I've got some more clips now to show you concerning how their lies have been duping the people. Now we're, we're looking at Solomon's temple but the reason why I'm showing this to you there were two columns one called Boaz and the other one called Jashin. Now when I saw this I realized and I was very suspicious that they should not be there. I realized of course that there's no way in the wide world Yahweh the living creator God would have instructed a representation of the sun worship system in his temple. So there you have an example of how this had crept into by people that uh, Solomon had commissioned to build the temple. They were not God's people. They were not servants of Yahweh. And what is done is dupe and deceive millions of Christian people and Jews for hundreds of years. Now we're up to the chart on the tree of life. I'm going to read down the bottom there, first of all, in Genesis 3, 22 to 23. Yahweh said, Lest man puts forth his hand and takes also from the tree of life and eats the fruit and lives forever. Now, realizing that the uh, cartel of the Illuminati and the Masons and the secret societies, they make a claim that they have pure blood direct from the fallen angels of Genesis 6. They make a claim that they will be immortal. And now you can see why. But they also believe that Lucifer is the great architect of the nations, great architecture of, the, of everything. And that uh, falsehood of, um, of worship adoration is exactly what Satan wanted because he wanted to be just like God and he wanted everybody to worship him not the Almighty. Now with these diagrams I'm only going to put a couple up I urge you to go and see the secret architecture of the fallen angels and it's called Secrets in Plain Sight by Scott Onstock and as I said, even though it's a three hour long documentary, it's worth the time to have a look at it because all of the designers, all of the engineers, all of the architects were all top Mason figures, membership. And they were told what to do, where to place every main government building in France, in London, in New York, in Washington, and in this chart that you're looking at, you can see that the Great Pyramid is the same height as the obelisks that are being placed all over the world. Now, first of all, as this is the fellow called Bart Holy, he is the architect that designed the Statue of Liberty after the god Isis. But I wanted to show you this because all of these engineers, architects and people that designed every city, London, France, Paris, Washington, New York, etc. They were all top people as a Mason. And they all will demonstrate to the world that they have the right to rule. And there is the Illuminati hand signal exactly as you will see with the President of the United States and many other leaders when they are photographed. That's to tell the world that they have the right to rule and that they are members of the Illuminati and the secret society cartels. 